Hello everybody, my name is Bree, and I am one of the health educators for Healthy Nutrition Youth Initiative. So welcome to the first session of the eight week series. Today we will start off with discussing what is a fruit and what is a vegetable and how they are important to your everyday health. The next eight weeks will be jam packed full of learning opportunities. We'll be doing cooking demos, taking field trips, moving our bodies and learning about how to stay, health, stay healthy and active. I'm going to pass out a pre-survey on your knowledge of fruits and vegetables. This is not a grade, so don't worry about that. It is just like an idea where everyone is at before this eight-week course. And then we'll also take another one at the end of the eight weeks. First, let's talk about the objectives that we will be dis discussing today. And they are... So we're going to be able to, at the end of this course, differentiate between fruits and vegetables. Uh, discuss the importance of eating a variety of fruits and vegetables, the adequate amount of servings per day, the how fruits and vegetables can come in different forms, whether it's fresh, frozen, canned, dried, or juice. And we're also going to discuss how to incorporate eating a rainbow of fruit and vegetables into our daily diet. Lastly, we'll be uh, going over how, the importance of eating seasonal produce and local produce. All right, so let's first start with an icebreaker activity just so I can get to know you guys. So we're gonna, I'm gonna pass around this apple and whoever has the apple, they're gonna say their name and what their favorite fruit or vegetable is and why it is your favorite. All right, so what is a fruit and what is a vegetable? So a fruit develops from the flower of the plant and is the mature seed bearing ovary part. A fruit contains seeds, and from a culinary perspective, a fruit just means that it's going to be sweeter. A vegetable, on the other hand, is made from roots, stems, and leaves, and do not have seeds. Vegetables tend to be less sweet and a little bit earthier tasting. So, a rule of thumb, a fruit can be a vegetable, but a vegetable cannot be a fruit. That's kind of weird, right? I'll discuss that a little bit more. But... So there are some produce that's confusing. So what do you guys think? Is a tomato a fruit or a vegetable? And why do you think that? So although we consider tomatoes a vegetable, that's where you'll find it in the produce section, every single store, it's with the other vegetables, it is actually considered a fruit because it has seeds. All right, so we're gonna do an activity. So everyone is going to grab a food cutout, then place the food cutout that you have on this whiteboard. And if you notice, the whiteboard is going to be divided into two. So on the left side, it's going to be fruits. On the right side, it's going to be vegetables. And place what you have where and what category it is. So for example, I have a banana, so I'm going to go ahead and put the banana in the fruit side because I think it's a fruit. Um, after everyone places the food in the category you think it belongs to, we're going to go over every single object and discuss if it was put in the appropriate category and why. Alright, so the nutritional value of fruits and vegetables. Uh, fruits and vegetables have a lot of similarities in terms of nutrition, but they are not all created equal. Both fruits and vegetables are rich in fiber, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, which we'll discuss in a little bit. Both fruits and vegetables are low in salt and fat. Fruit is higher in sugar and calories than vegetables, which gives it that sweeter property. They both are filled with a high content of water, and although water varies from fruit to fruit and from vegetable to vegetable. So for example, uh, Cucumber has one of the highest contents of water out of all the fruits and vegetables, and it is 96% water. So that means that it's mostly water, right? Uh, carrots are 88%, apricots are 86%, grapes are 81%, so are cherries, and then bananas are 74% water. Good reason why they're good for you. So the health benefits of fruits and vegetables. So they are full of vitamins, minerals, fiber, phytochemicals, and wait, what are all those things? 
So eating a variety of fruits and vegetables promotes good health now and in the future. Eating enough fruits and vegetables promote good health and can protect against various diseases such as heart disease and cancer. So who wants to be smarter and who wants to grow bigger and who wants to have more muscles? Well, that's another reason why to eat fruits and vegetables because it ensures healthy growth and development for your brain and for your body. Uh, so when we hurt ourselves, the good stuff in fruits and vegetables helps us heal faster. They help our skin, eyes, heart, and even our digestive system. So have you guys ever eaten too much sugar, like candy, after Halloween, and you get a tummy ache? Chances are, if you eat fruits and vegetables, you won't get that tummy ache because it helps your digestive system and it helps um, everything run smoothly. Um, it also helps control blood sugar and control your weight. So how many should we be eating a day? And this is more matters. We want to see at least five servings of the fruits and vegetables every day. So two servings of fruit and three servings of vegetables. And the rule of thumb is if you have a plate of food, you want half of the plate to be fruit and vegetables. We strive for five. If you guys can remember that, strive for five. Five servings a day. So what is a serving? So a serving of fruit, so one cup of raw fruit is one serving, a half cup dried fruit is one serving, and then a, one cup of 100% juice is also another serving. With vegetables, one cup of raw or cooked vegetables counts as one serving. And then with leafy vegetables such as your spinach and kale, one cup cooked or two cups raw are, is one serving. And then also with juice, one cup of 100% vegetable juice counts as one serving of vegetables. So how many servings? Perfect. All right, so a good thing to do is try to eat the colors of the rainbow. And no, we're not talking about Skittles. So what colors are good for you? Um, so red, red keeps your heart strong. And if you guys can think about your heart and blood pulsing through your heart, red is the color of blood, right? So you want to eat red fruits and vegetables for heart health. Orange keeps your eyes healthy. Yellow keeps you from getting sick. Green helps your bones and teeth strong. And blue and purple fruits and vegetables help your memory. So we're going to do a little activity and let's go through the colors of the rainbow and we're going to come up with fruits and vegetables that are these colors. So let's start with red. What fruits and vegetables are red? Orange, yellow, so purple. All right. Next, guys, we're going to talk about the importance of local and seasonal produce. So what is considered local produce? Local produce is um, anything that is grown 100 to 150 miles of where you live. The, there are a lot of benefits of eating local produce um, and seasonal. So seasonal food is produce, produce that is purchased and consumed around the time that it is harvested. So if you pick this apple um, within however many days you're eating that, that's considered seasonal food. Food that like strawberries that you can eat all year round, that's not exactly seasonal food because as we know, we can't grow that all year, all time of the year. Um, so seasonal food can be fresher, tastier, and more nutritious than consumed out of season foods. Seasonal fruits and vegetables produced on local farms are often fresher as they do not require long distances to travel to get to your mouth. So why else do you think that eating local food is important? Other than what I just said. So local food benefits the environment. Um, purchasing local, locally grown food can help support local farms and maintain farmland and open space in your community. It also decreases the amount of transit time to your store and to your house. So that decreases the resources needed fossil fuels, all that. 
So California uh, is really, a, it's a produce mecca. Um, California grows over 200 different crops, some grown nowhere else but California. So we are very fortunate in that there's produce, local produce, right around us. Um, some of the things that California is known for growing is grapes, almonds, strawberries, oranges, walnuts. And California produces almost all of the countries, almonds, apricots, dates, figs, kiwis, nectarines, olives, pistachios, prunes, and walnuts. So we live in an awesome state surrounded by a lot of agriculture areas. <clears throat> so next topic, we've all been to the store before. And if you guys have noticed, you guys can get different forms of fruits and vegetables. So they come in fresh produce, canned produce, frozen, and dry in juice. But we're not going to talk about that. Um, so which one do you guys think has the most nutrients and what is the healthiest option to buy? Correct. So fresh and frozen are the top choices for nutrients. So fresh produce is picked usually before it has ripened fully. However, most nutrients are absorbed from the soil in early stages of growth. Fruits and vegetables can still synthesize the good nutrients during post-harvest ripening. Frozen produce is fully vine ripened and undergo minimal processing, which makes this the second healthiest option. And sometimes it could even be the healthier option than eating fresh produce. Um, it, usually undergoes blanching, which is they take the, the fruit and dip it in hot boiling water and then they flash freeze it, which um, preserves most of, most of the compounds and the healthy nutrients in it. Um, so frozen fruits and vegetables can, they're not only minimally processed, but they're also, they can be cheaper than produce, the fresh produce. Canned fruits and vegetables are usually vine ripened as well, but they tend to go they undergo a little bit more processing and then they put them in solutions such as syrup or sodium or you know some kind of preservative and if you guys have noticed canned produce has a very long shelf life and that's why there's a lot of preservatives in there. Uh, dried fruits it can also boost your fiber and nutrient intake for your body um, however, these are also high in excess sugar and calories, so we try to limit dried fruit intake and just eat them in small amounts. So the best method is the one that gets you to eat your veggies and your fruits. Uh, fresh, frozen, or canned will help you reap the nutritional benefits every day. And a little tip that you can do if you have a lot of canned fruits and vegetables in your life, you can actually drain the the solution that it's in, so like the sodium solution or the syrup, and then you can even rinse them, give them an extra little rinse, and that gets rid of excess calories or sodium in preservatives. All right, so what do we talked about today? So how many servings of fresh fruits do we need, or fruits do we need a day? Two. How many servings of vegetables? Three. Why is it important to eat fruits and vegetables every day? helps promote good health, memory, mood, everything. It's it's really good to get in the habit of eating five a day, thrive for five. And so let's talk about what are some things in your diet that you eat every day that you would like to decrease and instead substitute with a fruit or vegetable. All right. Thank you guys so much for your time, and we will see you next week for the cooking demo. We're going to be tasting foods and learning more, more about how to incorporate healthy diets into our everyday. And thank you guys so much, and next week's going to be fun and full of tasting. So we'll see you next week.